and good morning. We thank you for joining the God's Way Ministers once again for another but beautiful and blessed Sunday morning that the Lord has allowed us to see. And yes, it's Sunday morning and we are back. We thank God for this great and glorious opportunity to be back to preach his holy and divine word. We thank you for your continued love, prayer, and support of this ministry. And we want you to know that this ministry loves you. We appreciate you. We thank you. And we're praying that God is doing miraculous things in your life. We're praying that God is turning some things around, opening doors and making a way out of no way just for you. Uh, we thank God right now for all that he's doing, all of his blessing that he has bestowed upon us all. Well, let's get right into what God has for us, because as always, this is a day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Let's look at our text scriptures here. Uh, we're looking at Job chapter 13, verse 15, and then Job chapter 14, verse 14. And in Job chapter 13, verse 15, we're looking at just that A part where it says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Uh, Job chapter 14, verses 14, we'll look at the B part, where it says, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change come. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank and we praise you, O oh God, for another great and glorious opportunity to come before this, your people. O oh God, as always, we ask you to hide us behind the cross that they will only hear and see you, that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praises out of everything that is said and done here. Speak to us right now, Lord, like you've never done before. Father, because we all need to hear a word from you. Lord God, we just ask you to grab us all by the reins of our mind, but we'll stay focused on your word, your will, and your way. Have your way right now. Speak, Lord God, like only you can. Bless us in this time, Father God. Come and visit us right now. In Jesus' name, amen. We would like to use for a subject, hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith. There are times in life when we deal with things that really just shake us to the, the core of our very existence. But I want to tell you right now, please don't give up. Don't give in. Hold on to your faith. There are times in life where you may feel just completely helpless and hopeless. But in those troubled times, in those rough times, don't give up. Just look up. Why? Because the Bible says in Psalms 121 verses 1 and 2. It says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So that lets me know, don't get down. Don't look down. There's nothing down there for you. It lets me know, don't let worry and none of these other things overtake you. Continue to look to God, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. He will take care of it all. Just hold on to the promises of God. Hold on to what God has told you, and he will make everything all right. I know sometimes some things happen in life that will make you feel like you're just going to lose your mind. It makes you feel like you want to pull all your hair. It makes you feel like you want to give up. The loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, your spouse acting a monkey, the kids are on a fast track to wherever. It's always something. Trouble on the left, trouble on the right. Every time you look around, there's something. But God told me to tell you, hold on to your faith in him. Trust in him. Why? Because if he did it back then, he will do do it again. Have I got a witness in him? Don't let the devil play mind tricks on you. Don't let the devil make you think that don't nobody love you. Don't let the devil make you think that you're in this all alone. Don't make the devil think. Don't allow the devil to make you think that there's nothing you can do about your situation. There's something you can do, and that's called trust God. There's something you can do, and that means believe in God. Hold on to your faith and never give up. The devil will have you thinking that your life is over. But babe, I'm here to tell you, your life is not over. Just continue to trust God. Just continue to believe in God. Why? Because God said in the word, I keep your mind in perfect peace if you keep it stayed on me. So in other words, if I'm focused on God and I'm focusing on the things of God, I don't have time to be worried about stuff that's not important. I don't have time to be worried about things that I know God can take care of. That means I got to stay focused on him. I got to keep believing him. I got to keep Keep trusting him instead of me trying to put it in my hand and me trying to work with it and mold it and fix it. All I need to do is remember that God will take care of it all. So I just got to put everything in his hand. 
You may say, Reverend, well, you don't know my story. McNeil, you don't know what I've been through. And you're right. I don't know your story. And I don't know what you've been through. Glory to God. But I do know one thing. I know a God that will fix what's broken. I know a God that will make a way out of nowhere. I know a God that has all power in his hand and he will make everything all right. I know a God that will heal cancer. I know a God that will heal sugar diabetes. I know a God that will turn things around in your life if you just hold on to your faith. I know a God that will Work even the toughest situations out if you just allow him to. I know a God that will fix a broken heart. And the reason I want you to understand this and know this, because the Bible says in Psalms 30 and verse 5, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Reverend, I, I'm going through so much, and it's one issue after the other, one problem after the other. And I understand you've been going through it for a while, but I need you to understand when that verse said weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In other words, I may be going through right now. I may be feeling bad right now, and I might been have been dealing with this for so long, but God wants you to know there's some joy that's coming in the morning. And I don't know about nobody else, but I'm waiting on that joy that's coming in the morning. I'm waiting on that peace that's coming in the morning. Why? Because I know that with the faith that I have in God, God will make everything all right. God will restore you. So I'm here to tell you, just hold on to your faith. Your joy is on the way. Your peace is on the way. Your sanity is on its way back to you. Just trust God and watch him fix it all and work it all out in your favor. Because the Bible says in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things, huh, that means everything you go through, everything you deal with that seems like it's going to shake you and tear you down, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. A lot of folks stop at the first part where it says all things work, but yeah, it, it goes on a little bit further and it says all things work together to the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. In other words, I got to have a relationship with him. In other words, I got to have faith in him. I got to trust him and believe that he will do just what he said he will do. Glory to God. I feel like preaching this morning. He will do just what he said that he will do. He'll make a way out of nowhere if I only hold on to my faith and believe that God will do it. So don't let go of your faith because it's all going to work out in your favor. It's all going to work out in, for your good. I understand right now your heart is broken. I understand right now you're feeling down. I understand right now you're going through. I understand right now you can't even understand yourself. Why am I going through this? Why am I dealing with this? Why did this happen? Why am I hurting so bad? But I want you to know God is able to heal every pain. God is able to move whatever that is in your mind that's causing you to think that you're gonna not going to make it. That's causing you to want to give up. That's causing you to want to give in. That's causing you to want to turn around. I'm here to tell you, hold on to your faith and don't let go. As we look at our text first, let's look at our text. As we look at Job, everybody knows the story of Job and all that Job went through. Job went through problem after problem, issue after issue. Every time he would look at one problem, there was another problem. Every time he would try to deal with something here, something else would happen. And even in the midst of all of that, he started losing all type of things. And even in the midst of losing all of that, his wife came to him. She was tired of going through what they were going through. She said, Job, you ought to just curse God and die. Job said, woman, you sound foolish. I can't curse the God that has brought us thus far. I can't curse the God that healed me when I was sick. I can't curse the God that delivered me when my mind was all over the place. I can't curse the God that when I got in trouble, he delivered me. I can't curse the God that's made a way out of nowhere, not one time, but over and over again. No matter what I went through, God has always been there. Lady, you sound crazy. I'm going to trust him no matter what. I'm going to hold on to my faith that God will deliver. That's why Job said, and I take scripture. Job said, though you slay me, yet will I trust him. In other words, it's no matter what I'm going through. It's no matter what I'm dealing with. God is able to deliver. 
God will heal sugar diabetes. God will bring that blood pressure down. God will heal cancer. God will heal that broken heart. I understand that you're going through. I understand that that loved one may have passed, but God said, I'm here for you, baby. I'm going to wrap my arms around you and let you know that you're not by yourself. I want you to know that I love you and I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He wants you to know that he will be right there. Look at David. A lot of us, we spend more time telling God how big our problems is instead of telling our problems how big our God is. David only went out there to visit his brothers and check on him. And David wound up being faced with a big problem. He wanted to, he couldn't understand. He wanted to know why the children of Israel backed up on a hill, afraid of whatever this is in front of them, afraid of this giant Goliath. We serve a God that has all power in his hand. We serve a God that will make a way out of no way. We serve a God that when the bank account says zero, God still makes a way for your lights to say, oh, your water to keep flowing. You still got a car in the driveway. You still got a roof over your head. God made a way. Why are we afraid of whatever the devil is trying to do? Whoop, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Why are we afraid of whatever the devil may be trying to do? When we serve a God, that's just that powerful. When we serve a God that can do anything but fail. Everybody was telling David, oh, you can't do it. You're too small. You're just a little shepherd boy. David said, but you don't know the God that I serve. Saul told him, said, go on, try on all this armor and put this stuff on. So he said, told King, I can't do that. He said, that stuff right there, I haven't proved. That's not going to work for me. He said, all I need is the God that I serve. He's got all power in his hand. So he went down. He got the slingshot and them five smooth stones. He went out against that, that great giant, Goliath. And when he got in front of Goliath, Goliath, yeah, he bad-mouthed him. And he talked about him. He tried to attack his character. He tried to do everything he could to make David feel small and minute. But David told him, said, look, you the one come to me with this stick and all this armor and this sword. You come to me like this, but I come to you in the name of the Father. I come to you in the name of the God that has created this earth. I come to you in the name of the God that has all power in his hand. He said, I stand on his word and his promises. You ought to tell your problem right now. I come against you right now in the name of Jesus. Tell grief I come against you right now in the name of Jesus. Tell depression I come against you right now in the name of Jesus. Tell the devil you can't have my mind. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my children. You can't have my body. Everything belongs to God. Everything that I have belongs to him. And I'm holding on to my faith and believing that God's going to make a way out of nowhere. So God blessed David to be able to overcome that giant Goliath. David swung that slingshot around with that one stone and it wasn't by his power and it wasn't by his might, but it was by God. And when he swung it around and slung it, that stone hit Goliath in the forehead and knocked him off of his feet. And it was all because of David's faith in God. I got to move on. I got to move on. You look at the three Hebrew boys. They knew Either we bow or we going to burn. And some of us are going through situations like that. Either you bow down to what people are telling you to do or they're going to try to make it tough for you. Or if you don't do it this way, this problem is going to happen. And we both know that no matter what, it's not going to work out in your favor. Why? Because this is nothing that God is telling you to do. But when God tells you, stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Just stand still right there. They could have said, no, I don't want to face the fiery furnace. We're going to bow down. But at the end of the day, why bow down and be whooped by God? I'd rather stand firm, deal with the fiery furnace, and keep on pushing. Why? Because I know God's going to make a way. No matter how people talk about you, stand on the word of God. No matter how people try to put you down, stand on the word of God. No matter what they say about you, you can't have that business. You can't have that church. You can't prosper. The God that I serve has already told me it belongs to me. The God that I serve has already equipped me with what I need to do what he wants me to do. So I'm not trying to hear what the haters are and the debaters are trying to say, I'm holding on to my faith in God and believing just what he said. The three Hebrew boys stood right there. The music was played. They didn't bow down. And so the king said, we're going to throw them in the fiery furnace. He did seven times hotter than it all to be. Sometimes our problems are so intense that we just fall to our knees 
But God says, I got your back, baby. Don't worry about it. Sometimes we go through things that really cut us deep. But God says, I am here. The word of God said, Lord, I'll be with you. And because of, I know that he's going to be with me, everything is going to be all right. They threw him in the fiery furnace. And when they got in there, one thing I love about God, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And he may not work it out the way you think he ought to work it out, but it will be worked out. He got right in the fiery furnace with him, cooled the flames. King looked in there, he said, wait a minute. I thought we put three men in there. He said, but for some reason I see four. And they walking around and the fourth one looks like the son of man. He said, look, y'all come out of there. And from now on, everybody is going to bow down to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everybody is going to worship the God that they serve. Why? Because if he can deliver them out of a fiery furnace like that, I know that he will make a way out of nowhere. I know that he has all power in his hand. I know that he can make everything all right. So we ought to stand on our faith and trust God no matter what. If we look at the woman with the issue of blood, she could have gave up because there were so many people in front of her. She could have said, I'm never going to get my blessing. It's not going to happen. I, I just, I, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm hurting too bad. I'm bleeding too much. I just can't get through here. But that lady pushed. <laughs> what? She pushed. No matter what, she looked at those people and there were so many people in the way but that lady bowed over and bent over. She said, excuse me, can I get by you? Excuse me, let, let me get a little bit further. And I know people were asking questions. Ma'am, what are you trying to do? I, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know that everything will be all right. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, depression will leave. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, grief will leave. I know if I just touch the hem of his garment, cancer will be healed. I know if I just touch the hem of his garment, everything will be all right. So she pushed and pressed her way through the crowd. And when she got up there, she touched the hem of his garment and immediately she was made whole. And I don't know about nobody else, but because of her faith, Jesus told her, because of your faith, thou hast been made whole because you could have gave up because of the crowd. You could have gave up because there were so many oppositions. You could have gave up in the midst of your pain. You could have gave up in the midst of your destruction. But the fact of the matter is, you kept pushing in order to get to where God wanted you to be. And because you knew that your blessing was right there, some of us are right on the verge of our miracle, right on the verge of our breakthrough, right on the verge of our miracle, and you're about to give up. But I got to tell you, hold on to your faith. God will. Make everything all right. I stopped by to tell you, just keep holding on because God will make a way out of no way. Well, the clock on the wall says that's all. It's been real fun. Huh. Woo. Yes, sir. <laughs> but Red McNeil got to run. See you later, alligator. And after a while, crocodile. I, I know some of you that know my story have probably wondered why Rem McNeil hadn't stopped, why Rem McNeil hadn't given up with all he's been through with the head injury, with all he's been through with the neck problems, with all he's been through with the nerve damage. But Rem McNeil, for some reason, you keep on preaching. For some reason, you keep on teaching. In spite of folk talking about you, in spite of people putting you down, I'm here to tell you, baby, I'm holding on to my faith, even though I may have to get around on a walker, but I'm trusting God and believing that one day he's going to move this walker out of the way. I'm trusting and believing that no matter what the devil might say, my God has all power in his hand. It doesn't matter how bad some days I feel. I'm still looking to the hill for which coming my help. Because all of my help comes from the Lord, the one that made heaven and earth. And I don't know about you today, but I'm here to tell you. Hold on to your faith. No matter what you're facing right now, it's just temporary inconvenience for a permanent improvement. I understand right now. You might be dealing with grief. You may be dealing with depression. But I serve a God that will drive all of that mess out of the way. I serve a God that will perform miracles in your life. If you just trust him. If you just believe him. If you just keep on calling on him. No matter what you're going through, 
Hold on to your faith today. No matter how hard it seems, hold on to your faith today. Huh. You might feel like crying, but I want you to know, like I said at first, weeping men do it for a night, but there's some joy that comes in the morning. And I want you to know that God will turn your situation around. All you got to do is call him. Don't let your situation overtake you. Let God overtake your situation. <laughs> Somebody needed to hear that. Don't let your situation overtake you. Let God overtake your situation. We want you to know that we love you and we're praying for you. God bless you and you have a great day.